we're given that function, we've got to find the derivative. Well, the derivative simply is going to be f prime of x equal to, just got some terms to work with here. So pretty straightforward, apply the power rule, right? Bring 2 down here, multiply to 3, get 6. x, subtract 1 away from the power, so that's x to the first. Minus 5x, x just drops, so it's minus 5. There's my derivative. We're going to find the slope of a tangent line. I need to look forward here to uh, part C where we're finding the equation of that same tangent line where x is 2. We need this information of x is 2. We're going to take 2, we're going to plug into the function. I'm sorry, we're not going to plug into the function. We're going to plug into the derivative, rather. And if we plug into the derivative, that gives us the slope. So our slope here, m, is going to equal f prime of 2. Taking 2, plugging in back here, we've got 6 times 2 minus 5. We've got 12 minus 5. The slope of that tangent line where x is 2 is going to be 7. So now if we're going to find the equation of the tangent line where x is 2, if we put our answer in point-slope form, we need a point, we need a slope, right? Well, we've got half of a point here with an x-coordinate, and we've got our slope back here. So we still need to figure out the y-coordinate, right? Figure out the y-coordinate, we take this value of x is 2, we go back to the original function, and we plug in. So our y-value is going to be equal to f of 2. f of 2 is going to equal... 3 times 2 squared, minus 5 times 2. Let's see, we calculate that out, we've got what? 12 minus 10, right? So f of 2 is going to be 2. So we know our point. x is 2, y is 2, and slope is 7. Meaning the equation, the tangent line is going to be y minus 2 equals 7 times x minus 2. Right, there's a little review of finding equations of tangent lines, essentially. Now, where we take this a step further today, really for appreciation's sake, is we're going to sketch the graph. Okay, we're going to take all the given information here. We're going to summarize with a sketch of the graph. So when we sketch the graph, the two things we want to sketch out, we want to sketch out the original function, and we want to sketch out our tangent line. Now, keeping in mind, you know, all this stuff we've just gone through, some of the, the key pieces that we want to identify as we sketch out this graph we want to identify where our point's at, right? Because that's our, our tangent point. That point's going to be a part of the tangent line. It's going to be a part of the curve, right? So it'd be helpful to plot that out to start. And we know there's going to be a tangent line going through that point. We know what the slope is, so we could count out the slope. We could find another point, right? We could draw that line. Um, but let's focus in on the function first. Okay, we know the function has to travel through that point. With regard to this function, we should know what the function looks like, right? f of x equals 3x squared minus 5x. That's a quadratic. That's a parabola. Now off the top of our head, sketching that out. You know, we may not know precisely what that looks like. So using the graphing calculator for some guidance here, maybe taking some key points from the graphing calculator and using those to help us plot this out, that might be a good strategy. So let me go to the graphing calculator here. Let me plug in this function. So there's our function. We see that it's passing through, looks like it's passing through the origin, right? And then it's got another x-intercept over here, somewhere between 1 and 2. 
So if I use those intercepts as key points to sketch in this curve, let's go back now. I saw that it passed through the origin. I saw that it passed through, oh, over here somewhere, right, between 1 and 2. Essentially, the curve of the function looked like this. We know it goes through that point of tangency. From here, the only thing left to include would be that tangent line. So again, I know what the point of tangency is. From that point of tangency, I know the slope is 7. I could go up 7. I could go over 1, right? Um, but if I go up 7, I go over 1, I'm essentially going to get a line that looks something like this, right? Doing the best that I can to make it pass through just this one point right here. So there's a reasonable sketch of uh, all the key players here on this problem. Okay, so you got a, a particle that moves with an equation of motion, defined as f of t, finding its velocity. All we have to do when we want to find the velocity at a given time is take the derivative of the function. So finding f prime of t here, that equals Again, just individual terms to work with here. So applying our power rule on t squared, bring 2 down. Got t to the first, left over, minus for 5t, t drops. So it's just minus 5. For minus 6, that's a constant, so that goes to 0. There's f prime of t. We're using the derivative as a formula to help us find the velocity. So the velocity is going to be equal to if I assign v as the velocity, f prime of, finding the velocity when time equals 2, well, we'll plug 2 in. We'll plug 2 in the derivative, we get 2 times 2 minus 5. Now we get negative 1 back, right? We didn't assign any uh, units of measurement on this problem. But things like you know feet per second, meters per second, things like that could be assigned as a unit of measurement, but ultimately the value we get back is negative one. Now if we take this a step further, keep the same function, and now let's find its velocity when whoops, it being this particle hits the ground, if we want to find its velocity given this function when it hits the ground, again with the velocity we want to make a connection to the derivative. We know what the derivative is here, somehow we want to apply it. The thing is we need to know a time to plug in, right? And do we know the time when this particle hits the ground? Is that given? No, that's not given, right? So we need to find it. If we've got a particle that moves with an equation of motion that is defined as this function right here, this f of t idea, that represents the distance that it has traveled at these various times. That distance, by the time it hits the ground, we're assuming it goes up, it goes down, something like that. That's going to be zero, right? That's going to be zero when it hits the ground. So we're going to let f of t be zero. And we're going to take zero. We're going to set it equal to this t squared minus 5t minus 6. So take the original function, play with the original function, let f of t be zero, and now let's solve for time. If we solve for time, we'll have a time we can use a time we can ultimately plug back in to the derivative to find the velocity. So solving for time here. Looks like we got something we can factor, right? We've got t minus 6. We've got t plus 1. So solving for t, well, let's see. Time's going to be from t minus 6. It's going to be 6. And from t plus 1, we get negative 1. 
So again, I haven't assigned any units of measurement. Could be seconds, could be minutes, whatever. As far as times are concerned, though, you know, we only need one time to play with. Which one makes the most sense? Has to be this one, right? The last time I checked, we can't go back in time, right? Can't have a negative time. So six makes the most sense. We're going to take six now, and we're going to plug into our derivative to find the velocity. So velocity is going to equal f prime of six. Running out of room here. That's going to equal. It would be two times six minus five. Got 12 minus 5, we get 7 back. So the value assigned to the velocity is going to be 7. 